Welcome back to part 4 of the IQ tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on the custom lighting effects called Wave and Ripple. These effects are somewhat similar, so that's why I'm going to cover both in this video, and I'll also explain the slight differences between the two. I'll start with the Wave effect. So let's go ahead and create a new Wave effect. So now we've got a basic wave that shows up on the left side of the keyboard and restarts before it can finish going all the way across the keyboard. So let's give it a longer lighting time, say 5 seconds, so that it can finish going across the keyboard before it restarts. Over on the right, we've got a few options to help us play around with the wave. The tail increases or decreases the thickness of the wave. If you have a larger tail, you'll have a larger wave. Let's raise this to 10 to demonstrate this. Below the tail, we have velocity. This is the speed of the wave. If you raise it, you'll have a faster wave. So let's also demonstrate this by raising its value to 25. Below the velocity, we have degrees. This adjusts the angle of the wave. So if I set it to 50, we'll have a wave that's a bit slanted. If you check the box below degrees, you can make the wave two-sided. And finally, you've got a few options for making the wave start on key pressed. The most common combination of settings is starting on key pressed, from key pressed, and stopping after one time. Now let's switch over to the ripple effect so that you can see the similarity between the two effects. Okay, so now if you look over on the right, you'll see that there are two options missing. There is no more degrees and no more option to make it two-sided. And that's because ripples are already two-sided by default. So right away you might notice that the ripple is nice and round instead of just flat like the wave effect. Let's adjust our lighting time to 3 seconds so we can see it finish across the keyboard. Now let's make it start on key pressed, from key pressed, and stop after one time. I personally prefer using ripples for on key press effects because they look cleaner than the wave effect. For the remainder of the video, I just want to show you guys some tips and tricks. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a wave bounce back after it hits the end of the keyboard. So let's start from scratch with the wave effect. I want to show how you can chain wave effects just like we chained gradients and solid effects in my previous tutorial videos. I'm going to set some parameters. Lighting time will be changed to 3.5 seconds, velocity will be 20, and everything else will remain the same. Now I'm going to duplicate this wave so that we have two waves. This part might be a little confusing so pay close attention. For this second wave, I'm going to set the tail to 40. Then I'm going to shrink the color picker so it's towards the end of the graph. Basically what happens now is this second wave has a much longer tail than the first one, which normally means it will be really big. But because the color picker is towards the end of the graph, the wave will remain black until it gets to that part of the wave at 3.1 seconds, and that also keeps the wave roughly the same size as the first one. You have to make sure the second wave shows up right when the first one reaches the end of the keyboard. As you can see, the second wave shows up as soon as the first one reaches the end. All that's left to do is change the degrees on the second wave to be 180, which will make it appear from the right side of the keyboard. And now you've got a continuous bouncing wave. To clarify things further, I'd like to show exactly what's going on with the second wave, which does all the magic to create this bouncing wave effect. I'm going to delete the first wave so we can focus just on this second wave. When I drag the color picker to cover the entire graph, we get a really big wave. If I drag it halfway, we get half of the size. If I half it again, we get another half. So hopefully this makes more sense if it didn't make sense before. Basically, if you make the tail really big, you can use the graph as your friend to make the wave show up at a specific time. Another trick you can accomplish is making two waves bounce off of each other. Let's start from scratch again and I'll adjust the parameters of the wave to be a 2 second lighting time with a velocity of 20. Now if we duplicate this wave, then set its degrees to 180, we get two waves that meet in the middle and they appear to bounce off of each other. But this is actually just an illusion. The two waves are passing each other but your eyes still see it as if they're bouncing. So that's a neat little trick. It works best if the waves are the same color. If you set the two waves to different colors, for example red and green, the illusion is gone and you can tell they are just passing each other. This next trick is my personal favorite and it uses the ripple effect. Let's create a new ripple and without changing any parameters, let's make the color picker really small. It will end up looking like a bunch of sparks. This also works with the wave effect but I personally think it looks better with the ripple effect. Now I want to show you a fun type lighting effect. Let's create a new ripple and let's make it green this time. If we set the lighting time to 0.4 seconds and make this ripple start on key pressed, from key pressed, and stop after one time, you'll get a burst type lighting effect. This is one of my favorite type lighting effects and I use this in a lot of my profiles. Something I've been asked a lot in the past is how you can create a rainbow ripple. So I'll go over that real quick. Starting with a new ripple, add 9 color pickers that are evenly spaced. I mentioned how to make evenly spaced color pickers in my previous tutorial. Now follow the color wheel. Red, pink, purple, blue, cyan, green, yellow, orange, and then back to red. Now you'll notice we have a rainbow ripple. Let's adjust its lighting time to allow it to finish across the entire keyboard, and I'm also going to raise the velocity a bit. And then let's do the usual type lighting effect settings. The finished result is a rainbow ripple type lighting effect. 
Another adjustment you can make is to increase the tail to a larger value like 10. This will make the colors less squished together. This covers just about everything there is to waves and ripples. If you guys enjoy my content, please consider supporting me over on Patreon. If we can hit and maintain my goal of 300 Patreon supporters, I'll create full tutorials of how I made some of my best profiles like Deep Space and many others. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next tutorial.